Okay. Okay, so we're we're recording. Okay. So welcome to the Soul on Fire podcast, where I interview cool people who I admire, or they're up to cool things, or both. Usually is the case. And cool today people. I'm joined with cool today people I'm, on. Uh, <laughs> I've got a bit of a lag here on Zoom, but um, today I'm joined with Mitra Prabhu or Mitra Das, um, who I met when I was in the US and I kind of cross paths with the, the ISKCON youth bus tour and you were grooving and shaking, playing guitar and banjo and just being a super cool guy for young people. And I was just super inspired. Like I saw you and I was like, wow, this guy's like kind of older, but he's like cooler than me. <laughs> um, well, I was like thinking, I was traveling with the bus tour and that wasn't the first tour I'd done with them. And a lot of these kids on the bus tour are from Alachua, Florida, which is the biggest Hare Krishna community in North America. And a lot of, a lot of people, a lot of young people, when they come into that community, they kind of have a hard time breaking in. They say it's like kind of clicky and they have a hard time getting in with the youth. And I get it because those youth are like so super cool. I mean, I don't think they're intentionally like shunning people. It's just, they've got this high level of awesomeness going on there because that Alachua community is like a planet with a gigantic gravitational pull and anything that's not nailed down securely on your tiny little planet in North America gets pulled off and falls to planet Alachua and Alachua just keeps getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> And so, like, it becomes this irresistible force. But we have, we are kind of, um, what's the word? We're, we're stubborn. We have not fallen into Alashua. We decided we're going to keep separate from it. <laughs> but going on the bus tour, I was the bus driver, and I just felt like these kids are actually, they are really nice. They're really polite and inviting and welcoming. And and I felt like I was an honorary youth for the month that we were traveling. Uh-oh. Am I frozen? No, I, I was just... just You're just holding still. Yeah. You got to keep moving. Otherwise, I think that um, our internet has yeah. stopped. Um, I'll sway back and forth so, or something. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Go in time with the music. <laughs> Um, so I have a commercial truck driver's license. I, I used to have a job driving a freight truck, you know, big 16 wheeler. Um, and so I've, I've kept that up and driven tours with the bus tour. Uh, nice. so you know, when I met you, we were at the New York Rath Yatra yeah. and yeah, and that tour, I forget where, where all we went that year. I think I also saw you um, maybe the following day um, at Detroit. Mm. Yeah, we stopped off there and we had lunch um, on picnic tables in at the temple, the Iskon temple, and Gauravani was there and yeah okay yeah there's the whole festival circuit so i don't know who your listeners are but <clears throat> if they're all in australia or international or at all yeah um, pr pretty international at this point um yeah okay so so where are you now like you're right now you're in a house that you built and it looks super cool and if you oh. feel inspired, you could even give us a tour. No, actually. Well, maybe next next week or so. Actually, this is a, a tiny house. It's like a oh. trailer built out of logs. Wow. It's all wood. 
Um, yeah, we have a lot of wood here in this part of the world. We're on the eastern side of the US and there are trees everywhere. If you just leave the land alone, it grows up in trees. Hmm. Um, and I've lived in North Carolina for the last 25 years. But we just recently moved uh, a little closer to town, a little closer to Asheville, which is seems like the big mecca for cool people in North Carolina. Uh, and I've been building a house, so I'll give you a tour next time. Yeah, nice. Sometime. Yeah, I have my phone. <clears throat> and yeah, we're cool. getting close to moving into it. Um, and that house was designed around the temple room. Um, what we like to do is to interact with local people. And the local music here is bluegrass with banjos and mandolins and fiddles and guitars and people singing in harmony. And so we try to replicate that with our kirtan. Would and you be willing to show us something on your handmade guitar? Is it uh, called the Mitra Tar? The Mitra Tar, okay, let's see. I've got two of them here. Do you want the primitive or the more advanced one? I like the primitive, but primitive. yeah, maybe in the next, next time we can have the more advanced one. Yes, we can um, prove uh, evolution. We can show how things are <laughs> This is amazing. This is, uh, this one was made, oh, about 12 years ago. And you made it, yeah? Yeah, just a tin can. And I put the bridge over it. I ran a string across it. And I was just, I just had a desire to make some kind of an instrument. And so I was surprised. Hey, that, that actually makes a sound. Can you <laughs> hear that? Yeah, it sounds great. Can you play us a number? Okay, I haven't prepared, um, but uh, Makes it even better. Do you want to explain the Maha Mantra if you're going to sing it? Because some of our listeners may have never heard mantras before. We're just going to do ragas. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to sing with it. Okay. So it takes a while to get it all the way tuned up.
So when I invented that, I just felt like I could lose all of my money and all of my guitars and all of my possessions. And I could just get a stick and a can. Right. Be able to make music. Um, and an old piece of glass for a slide and a cut up a piece of a credit card for a pick. Mm. And then just play it anywhere. And then I could hold this out and say, Right. <laughs> help me out. If I hadn't seen it, I would have, I, I wouldn't have any idea how inexpensive and resourceful that thing is. I would have thought, wow, you know, it's like some guy with a super sweet sitar or something yeah, in India. Or something, yeah. It sounds so, yeah, totally authentic. It is surprising. Um, and the story behind that is about when Prabhupada came back to New York, he started the Hare Krishna movement in 1966 in New York. And there was no money. I mean, it was, there was no money at all. He had the books that he had printed in India and he would sell a few of them here and there. And he was dealing with people that had no money. Uh, but somehow they started this little storefront temple and one of the devotees that was there, oh boy, can you still hear me? Am I coming yeah. through? Okay, I just saw the screen get fuzzy. Um, one of the devotees that was there in those early days said, that summer we bought a lot of watermelons and we ate the watermelons and we asked Prabhupada, what can we do with the rinds? You know, the, the skin from the watermelon, Prabhupada said, you peel it, cut it up, and you can cook it like a vegetable. And he said, that's what we ate that summer was watermelon rind, subjis. They were that poor. <laughs> wow. They had they could not afford to get a phone. There was a payphone on the corner. And so they would use that. And when Prabhupada went to San Francisco and they needed to call him, they didn't have enough quarters to pay for that. So they went and they bought washers, you know, the round thing with a hole in it. They put a little piece of tape over the hole and they dropped those in the pay phone so they could. <laughs> and they, they didn't have any money. I mean, they were dirt poor. So Prabhupada, later on, when he returned, uh, 11 years later, or 10 years later, to the uh, New York Rathiatra Festival, which is the same festival where I saw you. Um, right. Um, Prabhupada came there in 1976 and it was like a joyous homecoming all of these devotees he saw how things had built over those 10 years and he said we went on this parade down 5th Avenue uh, when he got back he sat in a room with a group of devotees and he said he told a little story he said there is a man who found a gourd a dried up pumpkin shell, which is a gourd. Mm. Um, it had been thrown away. He found a stick. He found a wire. And he put those together and he made an instrument and he made beautiful music. Prabhupada said, in the same way, I have found all of you, the rejected refuse of your society. And I've put you together and I've created this beautiful Hare Krishna movement. So when I heard that story, I always thought, man, if I ever get a gourd and a stick and some wires, I'm going to try making a tambora. And so that's what brought this about. Somebody gave me a gourd and that he had grown in his garden. It was a, it's a big one. And I thought, man, I don't know how to, I don't know what to do with this. I don't know how to use a gourd and I'm, I'm nervous to cut it open and so i thought well let me experiment with these things that are thrown away because they make noise and 
this was all garbage. <laughs> Every bit of it. Here's some broken Joppa beads for the little oh, fine tools. Got some Tulsi on there then. Yeah. Nice. So you can do your fine tuning here. Wow. Like you do with the tamburo. All right. So that's the primitive Mitratar. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. And how did you become a Hare Krishna? Oh, wow. No. <laughs> <laughs> You want the five, the five minute story or the six uh we've six got hour. 31 minutes so yeah like whatever version you feel inspired to tell um i had graduated from high school and spent the whole summer in san jose um I was just getting restless and I did not want to go back into school right away. And so in September, I decided to hitchhike to Mexico from, I was in Bay Area, California. And so I just loaded up my backpack and started hitchhiking to Mexico. And on the way I stopped in San Diego, um, where I met some people who said, we're going to the Krishna temple because they got free food tonight. It's, it was Sunday. And so I went in and I saw the devotees dancing in the kirtan and I thought, well, this really looks fun. Um, and then there was the lecture and there I met somebody that I knew who was actually um, a relative. It was my mother's cousin, hmm. this really cool guy, Charlie Blankenship, who had traveled around the world on a sailboat with his wife. Um, he would hire out working on sailboats, and then when they get to a port town, he would play flamenco guitar, and people would throw money to him. And uh, so that just seemed like what a cool person. Um, so he was at the temple and I ended up staying at his, at their house on the beach for a few days, a few nights. And during that time I read his Bhagavad Gita and just thought, this is a very interesting book written 5,000 years ago. Um, I was interested in archeology span and Egyptology um, and seeing the Sanskrit, I'm like, well, that's as old as the Egyptian hieroglyphics. And it's been translated and people still use this language. It's not a big mystery. Well, let's, let's look into this. I was fascinated by that. Didn't really understand it, but I understood enough to want more. And so hitchhiked home and a month later decided, yeah, I'll go check out the temple in Berkeley. And so I went there to spend a weekend. And then I thought, well, that's pretty cool. I'll stay another weekend. And so I just stayed on and never, never left. Um, so that's kind of it. I mean, nothing right. like amazing. It's just <laughs> <laughs> But it is amazing that you're still, still doing it, and you, you use Zoom to share that Bhagavad Gita. Um, we recently, uh, I was joining your Zoom reading sessions um, yeah. during lockdown, and I was so inspired that I started my own, just oh, purely ba based on you know I even took notes how. I named the note um, notepad thing, how Mitra uh, facilitates Bhagavad Gita Zooms. <laughs> and I, I just like wrote down anything I noticed because I'm so inspired by how you, how you share Krishna consciousness. We've been doing it for a while and it just kind of started spontaneously um, where we used to live. 
there were a lot of fam devotee families and kids and some of the kids were going to the public school and at the school, although they were trying not to be devotees and trying to hide it, and we were out in the country, these country people were like, well, tell me more about it. This sounds really interesting. And so they started reading Bhagavad Gita's. I mean, high school kids, young, early on in high school, like, you know, freshman, ninth grade. Um, and then when we started inviting people to our house for bluegrass style kirtans, because that wasn't so welcome at the temple. So we, we just started, okay, we'll just do it at our house. We don't want to rock the boat. Um, these kids started coming and then we'd serve them a feast. Can you hear me? Yeah, perfectly. Oh, good. Okay. Um, and after the feast, I'd say, Hey, let's, let's read some Gita. And they're like, yeah, uh, it was funny. There's just one kid who just turned 13. And for his 13th birthday, he bought a Bhagavad Gita because he'd been like reading somebody else's. On his 13th birthday, he bought a Bhagavad Gita from Amazon and he wanted to make sure it's got to be Prabhupada's Gita. And so 13th birthday, on his 14th birthday, I gave him a Srimad Bhagavatam. That the whole set? His, no, just the first volume. Got it. And he just read that over and over and over wow. again. And like, these are country people, young country people. Um, so I kind of developed that, you know, going around in a round, everybody read a verse and all right, what does this mean? What do you see in here? And get them talking about it. Then our son went to college at Appalachian State University in Boone up in the mountains. Um, and that's also in North Carolina. And it's kind of like you take the state of North Carolina, which is sort of shaped like this and Boone's up here. And then you take it and you just shake it. And like all of the really cool people <laughs> end up here in Boone going to college. <laughs> and so we would sit out on the lawn where everybody's doing yoga and throwing frisbees and um and we would serve out kitchri and cookies and make friends with people and then we'd have a box of gitas and just say hey want to read some gita and then we'd have a circle of people a dozen a dozen sometimes like 25 people in a circle reading bhagavad gita and they would sometimes they, they would say i'm supposed to be in a class right now but i gotta stay and see how this chapter ends <laughs> um so i felt really good we had become the distraction we were <laughs> distracting them because you know how when you have a program and you invite people to come and then they Later on, they say, oh, I really wanted to come, but uh, this came. So yeah. instead of us having a program, we just went out there, yeah. right in their face. And people were walking up like, what's going on here? Uh. <laughs> and so while they were going in that circle, I would ask them, so what are you seeing in here? What, what are you getting from this? And they would say some really cool things. And sometimes they would say some really weird things. <laughs> but no matter what they said, I would just try to encourage them and try to find something good in there. Um, uh, like I would just say, wow, I, I've been reading Bhagavad Gita for 40 years now and I've never really thought about it that way. That's, that's really interesting. So what you're saying is, and then I'd repeat it back to them and then kind of develop it a little further, add on a couple more points. And then, is that what you're saying? And they would be, um, yeah, actually, you took it a step further. That was really cool. I like what you did. And maybe we'll put this on there, too. And then mm. so we had just elevated this whole conversation based on Bhagavad Gita. So that's, that's what I try to do it as. I see it as a conversation. Nice. And the book is just there to 
help bring us up. Otherwise, what are we going to talk about? How much we hate certain politicians or right. certain policies or the weather or, you know, it's just stuff that we're dissatisfied with. Or if we talk about things that we like, then that just increases our material desires. Mm. And, and that's no fun. Who wants to have a bunch of material desires? Those things are like, man, they're embarrassing and, <laughs> and they don't make you happy. That's true. And I was really surprised how those college kids accepted the points as we read them. Mm. Um, it just got to be so fun to, um, you know, I wasn't like pounding them with stuff. I was just reading it and asking like, what do you think of this? Does this, have you ever heard that anywhere else before? Mm. Um, like there's one purport that we would read a lot. Um, the more we think of sense gratification, the more our mind becomes dissatisfied. Modern society is all about increasing um, material desires. And when, you're, when your mind's full of desires, you're never going to be satisfied. And so I asked them, have you ever heard that anywhere before? And they said, no. Does it make sense? And they all said, yeah. Mm. So, so yeah. yeah. No, that's awesome. It's a good segue into um, something I think you should talk about because it's your, your, your life, which is your spiritual practice and beliefs or your philosophy. Um, you know, maybe you could share um, like a, a sort of Krishna consciousness in a nutshell and like what does your day look like or your morning routine? Well, okay. Um, those are two big questions. We'll start with the easy one, the day. I wake up after I get enough sleep. Um, I don't I don't set me alarm clocks or anything because I'm on this really flexible schedule. I'm building a house and I don't want to fall asleep while I'm up on a ladder or something. Mm. Um, and then get out and do the outside work before it gets too hot. And then, and then work inside and then come back um, and do our class at seven o'clock at night. Um, well, also in the morning, I've got chanting on my beads, the Japa beads. Um, got them right here. And are, th are these the same beads you received no. 40 years ago? No. No, man. I wish I had them. I lost those in, yeah, 30 years ago. Got it. But, uh, I know someone who has his original beads that he got from Prabhupada back in 1970. Wow. Um, but uh, it's amazing. 16 times around, takes a couple hours. Um, I'm surprised. Been doing it every day since. How long does it take you? 1975, I've been doing this. Um, how long? It depends. If I pay close attention, it goes by really fast. Mm. It doesn't seem to take much time at all. Oh. But if I'm spacing out, I'm wishing I was somewhere else doing something else. It seems to take forever. Uh, right. Um, usually each round will be somewhere between six to ten minutes. Um, I usually get everything done in a couple of hours, but if I'm really locking it, locking it down, I guess that lockdown word is not huh. there anymore. <laughs> but yeah, lock down the Joppa, nice. um, lock down the mind and focus. It goes a lot faster and get a lot more from it. It's more concentrated. So my philosophy as a devotee, um, well, we've got all of these books with the philosophy, but years ago, I just decided I just want to be real about it. I don't want to 
put on some kind of facade and pretend to be someone really holy, but just to be genuine. And I think that's more holy than anything really. And people see through that if, if you're not being genuine. And being genuine is a lot more interesting than someone that's trying to be interesting. Hmm. Um, oh, and one thing I learned from a friend of mine who is not very tall. Let's <laughs> see. He's less than four feet tall. Okay. Um, he was an actor and, uh, because there's a big call for actors that that size. Uh -huh. And he said, one thing he learned in acting school is, don't try to be interesting, but be interested. And so I, I kind of run with that. I, rather than try to be flamboyant and stuff, it's just be interested in people and interested in what's going on. Mm. it really does work it, life has become so much more interesting hmm. like right. adopt yeah. yeah they should teach that in high school <laughs> right. they should teach a lot of things in high school <laughs> high school that was really traumatic for me you can imagine why I didn't want to go back to college right uh, and I still haven't. I still haven't gone to college. I've gone to college to give lectures, uh -huh. lots of lectures, but I've never gone to take classes. Right. Huh. But I can, I can converse with college students and college professors too. And um, so, yeah, I never stop learning. Keep. Uh, yeah, I'm interested in all kinds of topics because, um, you yeah, know, there was a there was a time as a brahmachari. I spent ten years as a brahmachari, and we were pretty pretty strict about everything, and really focused on on the books. <clears throat> but after getting married, and then kids, and things, and building, then. I just started getting interested in everything and it's like every topic that I look into, I go deep enough into it and I just think, wow, there's Krishna in there. I, yeah. see, I see Krishna in that and I see how I can apply this to Krishna consciousness. But I think that uh, the important thing was getting that grounding, the beginning years of Brahmachari life. Right. Going yes. deep. The uh, what would you call it? The regulation. Regulation. The rituals. All right. So yeah. How are things on? Yeah. So we've got um, we've got about fourteen minutes, and usually at this point, I'll um, we'll do a quick fire round, which is a twenty kind of random questions if you're up for it all right here we go all right cool um first one's kind of lame but it's what's the first what's your favorite thing in your closet right now i don't have a closet right now <laughs> <laughs> what's the best piece of advice you've ever received oh oh man wow so much well, I'll just, um, well, let's see. That was somebody just speaking to a group. Um, but he, he was uh, under a lot of legal problems in Germany. And the temple was under a lot of legal problems. The government had frozen their assets and frozen everything. Um, so he said during that time, he just went to people's homes and just kept things going. And he found that actually he was getting a lot more done that way than by running and managing a great big temple and spending lots of money. Uh, he never stopped. He didn't let, he didn't let all of the external 
circumstances stop him from doing what he felt was in his heart to do, to share Krishna consciousness with others. So I've taken that. I've, That's very cool. Yeah, it is. Do you have any pets? Um, no. There's a guinea hen running around. Um, but she just runs away from me, and I don't know where she came from. But that's, <laughs> that's very random. Um, do you have a favorite movie? Favorite movie? Yeah. Oh, man. I got to say, Your Ever Well Wisher. Oh. It's the documentary about Prabhupada. I've seen it a million times. Nice. We used to show it it uh, while we toured going to colleges. Oh. I have pretty much the whole thing memorized. Oh, uh, yeah. Nice. So, you're yeah. ever well with it. If anyone's okay. listening, look it up. We'll link it in the description. Yeah, it's so good. <clears throat> Describe yourself as a teenager in three words. Mm. Skinny, frustrated, um, and hopeful. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, you're not the first person to say hopeful. I like it. Um, this one's a little bit random. Might have to change it up a bit. Um, it's what's in your handbag right now? My handbag? Yeah, or I guess your man bag or your, I don't know, bag. I got my backpack here that has gone on multiple tours. Let me show this off. This is my paraphernalia that I've taken to rainbow gatherings. And over the last, oh, 15 years or so, taken it on bus tours. So headset, flashlight, little, little bit of soap. So I'm just ready. Nice. That's all you need. Um, what is your biggest pet peeve? Oh, what do I gripe about? Yeah. Oh, man, I, I try not to gripe. Um, it's griping. <laughs> yeah, good philosophy, totally. Right, that's my pet peeve. Right, people with pet peeves. Dark chocolate, milk chocolate, or carob? <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. Okay. <laughs> Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, if you could be from any other decade or era, which would it be? Oh, man. Decade, era. Oh, man. Oof. So you're bringing out the time machine. Whoa. Mm. I don't know. Wherever we are is where we're meant to be. I've, mm. I've thought this through and just thought, well, Krishna's got me here for a reason. Mm. That is even one of my little rants that I go on. Right. I'm in a storytelling mood. So if you had a time machine and you could go back to 1966 and meet Srila Prabhupada and see the Hare Krishna movement and Prabhupada, you know, he would say to you, you have a time machine. What are you doing here? You should go and see my guru. Bhakti hmm. Siddhanta. He's a real Vaikuntha man. You should go and see him. Go right now. Go get back in your time machine. And then you'd go to see Bhakti Siddhanta. And Bhakti Siddhanta would say, you've got a time machine? What are you doing here? You should go see my father, Bhakti Vinod Thakur. And then... Bhakti Vinod Thakur would say the same thing. What are you doing here? You need to go see Naratam Das Thakur. And Naratam would say, what are you doing here? You need to go see Gadadhar Pandit. Gadadhar would say, what? Go see Lord Chaitanya. Lord Chaitanya would say, what are you doing here? If I could be with Krishna, I would be with them right now. I would give up millions of bodies to be with Krishna. Go get back in your time machine. Go back and see Krishna. And so you'd go back and see Krishna and Krishna would say, Mucha what are you doing here? 
I set up everything for you in 2020. Everything you need to achieve perfection is right there. You don't belong here. You're out of place. You're out of sequence. Get over there. Wow. So there. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. So, of course, we all have nostalgia. And yeah, if I could do it all over again, that would really be fun to live my life again, knowing what I know now. Mm. Be cheating. Well, I'm really interested to hear your answer to the next question then. If you okay. weren't in the... Hmm. So I copy and pasted this from some website and it, and so it doesn't actually apply to you, but it says, if you weren't in the magazine industry, what would you be doing? So I guess it, for you, it would be if you weren't. If I weren't a devotee, what would I be doing? Yeah, sure. Let's, yeah. What, what, what would you say to that? Oh man, it's a wide, wide open world. I don't know. I don't know. What do you think you would be doing actually if if you didn't become a Hare Krishna? Where would you be? Uh, what was your trajectory? Uh, I don't know. It's been so long. <laughs> yeah, sure. I mean, I was 18. Mm. And here I am, 60. Three? Am I 63 now? Yeah, I am 63. Um, how many years is that? That's 45 years. Um, so, yeah, I met all kinds of people. I don't know if I'd be doing music, mm. that's for sure. I don't know if it would be a profession, but definitely be playing music mm. if I'm still alive. Speaking of... <laughs> Hi. Uh, speaking of music, what's on your playlist right now? I don't know. I don't have a playlist. <laughs> I uh, I tune into uh, Wisdom of the Sages. Nice. Just every day and listen to their interview. That's that's a daily thing. Very cool. Those guys. They are super inspiring. Wisdom of the Sages. I'll put that link in the description as well. If you could have any three people. Dead or alive, who would they be? Uh, any three people over for dinner? Any three people, what was the last part? Um, over for dinner. Um, so these can be people dead or alive. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, well, I mean, that's pretty obvious. Krishna, um, Lord Chaitanya, Srila Prabhupada. I guess first Prabhupada and then just say, hey, you're going to have Lord Chaitanya. Can you, with your permission, would that be all right if I invite him? And then, yeah. Okay. So long as we're, you know, just, um, yeah, definitely. Nice. I didn't have to stop and think about that. Yeah. Yeah, that, that is a pretty obvious answer, eh? If you yeah. could have. If so your house was on fire, what two things would you run back in to get? I don't know. <laughs> well, the deities, I guess. Yeah. We have beautiful deities. Everything else is replaceable. Sure. Um, once our house is done, you're going to see it. We're going to make that into our studio and we're going to, we're going to set it up. You'll, you'll see what's going on. Oh, so the house you're in right now is just a, a temporary like dwelling while you build your actual house. Is it on the same piece of land? It's right next door. Right. Cool. Yeah. I'm looking yeah. forward to the tour and. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, it's like a trailer, not much bigger than what you're in right now, probably. Yeah, yeah, it looks a little bit bigger, but yeah. Um, name a book that you read that positively shaped you. Oh, okay. Outside of the usual. No, any 
any book. I mean, you know, Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Charitamrita. Um, yeah. Well, let's go beyond that. I mean, that's okay. obvious. I mean, all religious fanatics are going to quote. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> well, let's see. Yeah, you, you got to say, a, a, you got to specify like a non Hare Krishna book. Um, but right now I'm listening to Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance. And it started off pretty good. It's getting kind of depressing and a little bit heady, a little bit too deep. But I was encouraged because I'm writing some books. And I just saw like, wow, people are reading this book? Okay, I can, I can do something like this. Mm. Um, so that's what's going on right now. And it may be, may influence my writing. That's cool. Um, yeah, I think yeah. you've got great stories to tell. Uh, so I definitely Stein read your book. John Steinbeck, I really like his style of writing. Because when, when I was driving a freight truck, I used to listen to recorded books, all kinds of lectures. Because when you're driving 11, 12 hours a day, when or I'll say when I'm driving 11, 12 hours a day, I can't just listen to kirtans and lectures over and over and over and over and over again. Um, I need something that's going to stimulate me. And so I would listen to um, lectures on Greek philosophy. Um, and once in a while, a good novel. And yeah, John Steinbeck's novels. Let's see, what are some of his? Of, of Mice and Men. Um, Cannery Row. Um, anyway, they're, they're just like so, they're about these ordinary people that are just kind of losers. <laughs> and they're just so realistic and you like, start to identify with them and I, I like that and so I want to write books about devotees like that just regular old devotees you know the devotee that just tries and he just can't ever get it together <laughs> okay you know something like that, that you can write can... my biography if you want <laughs> sure I mean everybody's material that could be woven into this um, the challenge is, like, I could just take stories from devotees and put them in there, but everyone's going to say, oh, I know who that's about. Um, I got to, like, kind of tweak it a little bit. And, uh, okay, so anyway, those are, those are some of the books, a couple of the books. Uh, it reminds me a little bit of a book um, by Satsrup Dusko Swami about a guy named Nimai. And his pet rat. Have you read that? Mouse, yeah. Nima the mouse. mouse. Yeah. yeah. Nima the mouse. Yeah. That was good. That was good. It was an attempt at something. Yeah. And we need we need more stuff like that. Yeah. There's also Jananda Goswami's um, Animals in Krishna Consciousness, which is which was oh. funny. Okay. Because like um, you, I noticed like Christian bookstores popping up. And I went inside, like, what? They only have one book, the Bible. Oh, right. But, like, how can there be a Christian bookstore? But they have all kinds of books full of novels about Christianity. And there is a, one book, it came out, like, 100 years ago, What Would Jesus Do? That's hmm. where that phrase came from. Right. Um, and it was, it's a really good story hmm. about a pastor who... How did it come about? Anyway, some things came about in his life, and he thought, what would Jesus do? And then he just took that as his motto on how to make his decisions. Right. And we just read something real similar in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Huh. How, um, let's see, there are, Lord Chaitanya is describing, there are 64 items to do in devotional service. And he goes through them, and like in the middle of it, one of them is 
you should accept whatever will make you should accept things that will make Krishna happy. You should reject right. things yeah. that will make Krishna happy. And so that's so similar to this, what would Jesus do? And so um, some things happen in this pastor's life that really make it hard for him to hold to that. I know this is what Jesus wants, but I'm going to lose a lot of friends if I do this. And so like, that's that's good material. That's good stuff. And we need we need honest, realistic stories like that as devotees. Mm. And the Christians also have lots of books for counseling, you know, where they talk about a problem and then in the scripture you have this and this and this to support the statement and here's how Jesus deals with this problem. Um so yeah, we need we need more books like that. Totally. Yeah. Well, I, I'll definitely get your book when it comes out or books. Okay. Keep, keep us posted. Um, yeah. Illustrations possibly. Okay. Hit me up. If you had a spirit animal, and this is like so cheesy, but what would your spirit animal be? Oh, since you said cheesy, I guess cheese would be my spirit animal. I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Um, favorite TV show? Mm, Beverly Hillbillies. Okay, I have to look that up. Any tattoos? Sorry. No. <laughs> Piercings? No. No. Just your cool glasses and Tulsi beads. Yep. Best gift you've ever received? <sighs> Uh, well, I could be cheesy and, <laughs> um, but, uh, well, this guitar, I've taken it all over, all over North America and my wife got it for me. Nice. Yeah. I went to, uh. What was the store? Anyway, it was a music shop that a devotee worked at. And I just thought, yeah, let me just try some guitars. And I tried that one and I liked the sound. And, and uh, so when I came home, I just mentioned, yeah, I was playing on a guitar. It was pretty nice. I said, oh, okay. And I mentioned the devotee that works there. And so she secretly called him up and asked, what guitar was it? And he's got a birthday coming up. And so she got that for me. And I've That's been, sweet. I've been beating the heck out of that guitar. <laughs> That's sweet. And last uh, one. If you had one superpower, what would it be? Oh, man. I've thought about this so many times. But now I'm drawing a blank. Huh. Um Ah, superpower. Well, when I built the last house that we lived in, I was sitting in the, we were digging the foundation and I was saying, Mitra of the future, I'm going to start building this house. Is there anything you want me to know right now? Um, that I should change. Right. It's about to yeah. Be and I would love to be able to hear the future and speak to the past. Yeah. Because you can only speak to the future and you can only listen to the past. Um, so right. I'd like to be able to switch it around. That's super cool. Yeah. I'd love to be able to hear myself in the future. Totally. <laughs> Totally. And then speak to your past, like you say. Yeah. And say, Hey, psst, don't do that. Right. Uh huh. Make, make that wall a little bigger and make it a little smaller. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> totally. Okay. Well, it's been a pleasure having you on here and, and just sharing your story and, um, and your, I loved your answers to those questions. Um, 
So do you have any message, any last words? You know, you've got, you've got the stage. What, what would you like our listeners to um, hear? Well, I know it's winter for you guys there, but it's summer here. And I just wanted to say in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, I am the taste of water. But he really meant to say, I am the taste of watermelon. Um, <laughs> watermelon is really the best thing going. So I think that's a good place to stop. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much again. And we'll, we'll see you on Facebook. And hopefully we'll join one of your Gita discussions again yeah, soon. Nope. Yeah, and if anybody out there wants to join us, it's 7 o'clock in the evening here, which is 11 o'clock in the morning for you. And where are you? New Zealand. So that would be 9 a.m. in Australia. It's about all I know. Okay. All right. So one thing I know on uh, YouTube videos you know, people give a thumbs up for something they like. Mm. And when you see a lot of thumbs down, I know it's people in Australia. <laughs> they like it. Um. People get upset about that. I just say, no, no, no. It's people in Australia and New Zealand like it. <sighs> and that uh, kind of lifts the mood. And so that's, uh, that's a superpower that I try to employ. Just lift the mood. <laughs> yeah. Well, you definitely have that superpower. And I'm super inspired by it. So thank you. Okay. okay. All the thank best. You. Good night. <laughs> Good night. We'll end the recording and then we can chat. Okay. <laughs>